other real estate association at this point. We do obviously respect Kenny Weinstein a lot with Jumpstart and we try to help Jumpstarters uh, or like-minded individuals, investors that want to get into the business. You know, and if I could help to get you to the next level, meaning your first investment property, your 10th investment property, understanding investment, because I don't do anything with owner-occupied. I, I am a licensed banker, but I have chosen to take a very specific lane. Now, if you need a referral for somebody to do an owner-occupied loan, I have a team that works for me. No problem, we can take care of it. But me, I am strictly non-owner-occupied. Property must be in the name of an LLC. I can't do a loan in, the, in your personal name for an investment property because I'm a commercial lender. Meaning everything, everything that we do, the property or the loan does not report to your personal credit. And for the most part, most of the type of loans you were asking me, hey, what's private lending? Is that hard money? We're not hard money. We're gonna actually have a class to talk about the differences and why. Um, so I've been in banking a little over 25 years. I've been an investor personally and have a portfolio of a little over 100 properties, doors, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, since 1993. I'm a second generation owner of investment property portfolio. I sold all my properties in Philadelphia, but I, all my portfolio is up in North Jersey. Okay, I'm a licensed realtor in New Jersey, PA, and Delaware. I've taught at Temple University at the real estate school over the past five years and I'm continuing education for licensed realtors. Um, I'm also licensed in insurance, in property casualty, and health and life. I also have my title insurance license. So I'm pretty familiar with the business as a whole. Um, I do enjoy these type of workshops where I can give back. Uh, we're here every second Monday of the evening of the month, 6.30 to 8 o'clock, second Saturday of the month, 10 a.m. to 12. We'll have some additional maybe Saturday workshops here and there. Like I just, I just put together a potential workshop for, with a property management company. We're gonna talk about all the things, what's going on with property management in the Philadelphia market. That'll probably be like the first Saturday in April. But I'm always gonna be the second Saturday of the month. So we, we have a full schedule of subjects all the way from January through June. Then we take off July. You should too, take a break. August we'll have a couple happy hours, a little get togethers kind of thing in different spots. September through December, we're right back to, to where we need. We'll be here, okay? So what I'd like to do is just get a little quick who you are, what you do, and what you're trying to accomplish. Why don't we start that way? Start with you. Hey, you know, my name is Eric. I'm just a uh, private business person. I just kind of have a lot of properties. Okay. Before it's and done. Okay. Excellent. Hi, I'm Kenyatta. This is my spouse. Um, and this is my best friend. But we're as a group trying to break into uh, real estate. And I just recently completed the Jumpstart Journey. So ah, congratulations. And we really right now are trying to source properties and find good deals because mm -hmm. we're trying to find good deals in Philadelphia and just stay educated and stay up on the things that are constantly changing in the real estate business. Excellent. Um, as she said, I'm um, um, I don't know what to say, guys. I'm just trying to get into it, trying to get my feet wet, and trying to learn as much as I can before I get invested okay. into emergency. Excellent. Hello, everyone. My name is Katrina. I'm currently owner of three properties, but I'm trying to uh, purchase more properties. Excellent. Hi, y'all. My name is Vegan. Um, I'm, I too I own two properties at the second time. I just want to basically inquire more. Scale up. Um, scale up my pro portfolio. You know? mm -hmm. Excellent. Learning how, you know, far as like uh, rehabbing them and all. I, I normally do it with my own money, so I'm trying to like. Leverage. Mm -hmm. I stop using my own money and use my business credit. Okay. Basically. All right. My name is Vicky. I have my multi-family, and I want to gain more properties within Philadelphia and also in the Tri-State area. Excellent. Hello everyone, my name is Samara. Um, I currently have one property that is in my personal name, not business name. So right now I'm in the process of learning the business credit, getting that property over to business credit, but also um, scaling up to obtain more properties with my business name. Um, and just more so continue educating myself. I was in real estate about 16 years ago, so now I'm getting back into it, but so much has changed. So I'm just, you know, continuing to educate myself. So 
I know what to do moving forward. Excellent. Uh, my name is Jonathan. I'm a real estate investor. I own uh, four properties, and I'm here to learn a bit more. Hi, my name is Sudamis, and I'm, I'm an investor too, and yeah, same. Do you know you sent me a dot today in a response? Just the dot. What a mistake. Okay, I just want to make sure. I, I, I was like, I, I sent the question mark. I wasn't sure what was going on. I, was, I couldn't connect the dots. I wasn't sure what was going on there. It's all good. But I do look at all my texts and all my. I, listen, I do return all my phone calls, all my emails, all my texts. If I don't uh, respond immediately, I'm probably just working with somebody else, but you will get a response as soon as I can actually physically get to it. Typically, my parameter time of work is 7.30 in the morning till about 6, 7 o'clock in the evening, unless I have an event. And then um, on Saturdays, I'm typically available Sundays. I kind of just take a little breather. If you want to text me, that's great. I'm probably not going to hear from you until Monday. Yeah, that's a little background on myself. Uh, I'm happily married. My beautiful wife, she owns a wellness center, a school for massage therapists, which I was able to uh, completely fund and help her and get her business up and running. It's out in, it's in the old city. So if anybody wants to get a student massage very inexpensively, shoot me an email, she'll, she'll put you on the list. So when you have them available, it's a little more cost effective than, you know, going to uh, Hand Stone. These are individuals that are being trained properly in a very holistic uh, school atmosphere. So it's, it's really nice. Um, and then I own, a, like I said, a portfolio of real estate second generation. Um, I've owned properties, like I said, since 92, but I've taken over the portfolio since 93. Um, and I, I love what I do. It's like when I was in the residential lending, you know, I liked what I did. I didn't always love what I do. I love doing investment financing. I just love it. I mean, I love the 30 calls a day, 40 calls a day, emails. I like keeping my brain moving. So a little back on myself as well. I'm a stroke survivor. May 15th will be three years. So I'm, all, I'm near recovery of 100%. I've lost a little over 110 pounds. So I'm bringing sexy back into, into the third year anniversary. So I'll be going speedo by May, March, April when I go down to Miami. So doctor's like, you know, you're going to have to think about maybe some surgery down the road with this much weight. weight loss. I said, we'll worry about that when the time comes. So... You know, it's always nice to get new clothes and new suits and all that stuff, so it's a lot of fun. Um, so I, li I live a very holistic life. I don't BS nobody. I'm going to tell you exactly the truth of what's going on. If you don't qualify, I give you the news the same way, bad or good. It's just how I roll. So a little bit about private lending. Private lending is pretty much backed by Wall Street, hedge fund money's family office. Lending One is owned by Blackstone Capital, which is one of the largest hedge funds that are investing in real estate in the United States. I mean, you probably have heard of them. They buy portfolios, but they also put money to work. There's approximately $4 trillion worth of money coming over from Wall Street into the private lending space. What does that really mean? That means we're going to be way more flexible and chameleon-like compared to a bank. We're not going to be as heavy of documentation. We're hard money. We're more, they're more predatory. They're looking to, you know, if, the, if you don't perform on the deal, they're going to take the property back. You lose the deal, and they get the property. So there's more loan-to-own atmosphere. So what, what is private lending as a whole? We're, we're this new blazed lane, and we've really kind of become the go-to for most real estate investors in the market because we offer stated products, debt service coverage ratio products. So birth strategy, which back in 92 was called common sense, we, the, the, for the millennial and Gen X and everybody else, they need an acronym to better understand something. So I don't know why, but it's okay. Common sense out the window. What are you going to do? It happens. So BRRRR stands for Buy, Renovate, Rent, Refinance, and Redo. Okay. When I, when in 92, when I bought my first property was, okay, these three properties, these places are rented. I live in this one. I'll, I'll live in there. Oh, that's called house hacking today. Well, that didn't exist back then. They didn't even have a cell phone. Was, I had beeper. So I lived in a one. And I said, wait a minute, let me rezone this to a five unit. I move in the basement. And now I'm living absolutely for free and, and everything. That, that mortgage has been paying itself. I don't have a mortgage anymore on that property. I still own it. It's like my little pet project. They were kind enough to open up a direct train station to New York right across the street. The college. I never rented a one student in my career. 
owning the property because I don't need to because it's in a nice little community right outside the college. They've built all these beautiful mixed-use eat, work, and live apartments all over the place. So my places are, are locked in two-year lease agreements. No pets, no fish, no cats, no dogs. You want a dog, buy a house. You want to live in my apartment, no dog. The dog will stay, you will get thrown out. It's a very simple process. I love dogs, but I own my own home, so I'm allowed to have a dog. That's just my thought patterns. So I have brand new wooden floors in my property, brand new granite, granite countertops, roofs inspected every 24 months, either gray, gray painted or replaced, it's a rubber roof, bricks repurposed, all brand new windows, brand new mechanics, they get inspected once a year I'm on top of my game. That's really being a good landlord and having a management company to support that. So that's one of my properties, but I have other properties in my portfolio. But I'm just saying, I did house hacking in Burr before any of these terms were really used. But the only way I can attract people to come is I have to use acronyms to attract people to come to talk about these subjects. So again, I digress. We're going to talk about Burr as a whole. So buying. Let's talk about the B, which is really the most important thing. You make money when you buy, right? So is this a good time to buy? Somebody was saying the inventory is tough, right? Who said that? You did? Okay, so the, the client that I'm working with right now, he's buying approximately anywhere between 15 to 20 properties a month, uh, a quarter. He has no problems buying. So I don't know what he's doing that's so magical. I have, a, I have multiple clients like that. He's buying anywhere between 10 and 15 properties a quarter. He's buying on auction. He's, buying, he's aggressively going after you know, uh, landlords that are disgruntled. He's crushing it. They have approximately 180 properties in their portfolio. That's one client of many that I have. But I'm just, I say, hey, I went to him and said, are you having a hard time finding properties? He goes, I, I, I just don't have enough time to close on all of them. So what is he doing that you're not doing? Okay, you gotta think about that. Okay, that's one thing. Two, foreclosures are coming. Short sales are coming. <laughs> Attorney workouts with all these private firms that over leveraged and lent incorrectly based on the market with the pandemic. They're coming. Evictions, thank God. I know we live in a, we reside here in a communist city, but they're going, they're coming. People are getting thrown out, okay? Think about all the people that weren't paying that took advantage of the, the, the eviction memoriam before, the, before the, it went into place two years ago. Who's really taking advantage of the system? So those landlords are pissed. And they're getting rid of those people, and they're even more pissed. They might not stay in the deal. They might sell the properties off once they come empty. Okay, so you've got to really think about what's going to be happening over the next six months. Is there going to be a crash, a predicted crash? I don't really don't think so. I think there's so much need for inventory, whether from a home buyer, but now the restrictions are going to get tight. The Fed's going to be increasing the, the rates. This is going to be an investor's game. Okay, it's going to be an investor's game. These properties are going to need lipstick on a pig to put back out to work to be able to be rented, whether it's Class C, B, or A rental. I mean, there's nothing wrong with low-income housing. Just be, expect to be more involved with the property from a deferred maintenance environment. But Class A, B rentals, there's not enough of them right now. You don't want to know why? The person that's getting outbidded when they're trying to buy their first home to live in is, is being outbidded by an investor, and they're going to rent it back to the individual that got outbidded. It's, it's basic mathematics, okay? I'm not telling you anything that's not really happening. This is all really happening. So how does somebody get into Burr strategy? You gotta make money when you buy. Don't ever, and I'm gonna pick on a realtor, but not this specific realtor, this guy knows what he's doing. And this young lady knows what they're doing, but don't ever overpay for something if it doesn't feel right in your stomach. If your gut tells you it doesn't feel right, don't buy it, just say next. Guess what, there's 8,000 of these realtors, including myself, in the greater Philadelphia area. Go to the next realtor, if you don't, if you don't feel the vibe. Am I saying anything that's out of the ordinary? No, it's just the truth, okay? Now hopefully, with this market shift, there'll be an attrition of some of the bad realtors, and some of the really good ones will excel and highlight themselves in this, this new found market. I think it's gonna be a buyer's market, by, by May, June, I think there's gonna be some more inventory. It's not gonna be a crash because we just don't have enough inventory 
for the people that are qualified, the people that have 20% to put down on a house. They just don't have any properties. The suburbs, everybody's moving out of the cities right now. Don't let anybody tell you differently. There's massive fright living in cities like Philadelphia, Chicago, New York. People are scared. The murders, crimes. But there's going to be an opportunity to be a landlord and rent these properties to people that are willing to stay here because their rent's actually going to be better than living in the suburbs. Because <laughs> suburb rent is moving up fast. Okay? So you could take advantage of these row home opportunities to accelerate and scale up your business. So buying in the burr is so, so important. So I'm going to use an old fashioned sheet that I use. It's called the Mayo sheet. Maximum allowable offer. It's not mayonnaise. It's not a condiment. So we're going to talk about how you go, how, how, many, how, how many people here are looking at properties every week? Okay, so how many properties a week do you look at? Um, ten. ten. So do you remember the first one or the tenth one? They all kind of start looking the same, right? So you bring a little clipboard and you put your information by address. Here, this sheet gives you, the, you can put the address right here. So you won't forget, you can take your little notes to the side. Smells funny. Mold, you can write some notes. But here's the address. So the most important part, other than buying, is what the after repair value is. And a good realtor will know what the true after repair value is based on comps and analysis of relevant properties in that market. Okay? So you really want to know what that after repair value is. So one important price is buying. The next most important price is the ARV, after repair value. And what I did was I simplified, I highlight all the, the acronyms. After repair value. After repair value is the number derived from comps, CMAs, and other appraisal tools. No, I would not just depend on Zillow. It's something to look at. I mean, Zillow already just gave away 7,000 7, properties because they didn't evaluate correctly. Would you trust them? 7,000 properties, they just took it, they just sold off at 50, 60 cents on the dollar. So, do they know what they're doing? Probably not. Okay, so something to think about. So you want to know your after repair value. Then I'm going to break down my costs. And you can see I use 30%, right? Buying costs, carrying costs, closing costs, margin of error, equity or profit. Now again, some of these things vary, but you need to have some profit in this loan, in this, in this deal. It's got to make sense, okay? And you don't hold me to the terms here. Just look at kind of from, it gives you kind of an idea what we're looking at. Right? So we've got after repair value, you have your cost of 30%, and then obviously you have repair costs. Now, from a bird strategy, how many people have done a rehab in the last 24 to 36 months? Raise your hand. One, two, three. How, how many? Completed. Zero. It's okay, zero is fine. You got one? You got one? Two. Okay. So private lending or hard money, the first question they're going to ask, one, how many deals have you done relevant to what you're trying to do in the past 24 to 36 months? You're nodding head because somebody probably asked you this, right? Whether it's a hard money lender or a private lender, I want to know a little bit about your history in the past 36 months. Not kind of finished, I'm kind of working on it, there's no kind of, it's either you're done or you're not. It's a very black and white environment in my world and most other private lenders world. And there's enough qualified borrowers not to hang on phone with you or you or anybody else here to guess what you're doing. Because you know, there's only so much time in the day to get loans closed, okay? If you could probably respect that, that mindset. So you want to be confident with these numbers. You really want to know what you're doing, okay? Know what the after repair value is. Know what you're buying it at. I don't know what you're buying it at. How would I guess? Uh, I'm kind of buying it somewhere between 40 and 50. What is it, 40 or 50? Well, I think I'm going to get, what, give me a number that you're not going to go past. Okay, 45. Okay, fine. How hard was that? When somebody asks you a question, just give them a straight answer. There's no kind of think of, want to, blah, 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 blah. Be confident. Use your number, because if the numbers don't work, you move on to the next one. It's called next. Okay, so you got after repair value, you got your cost, you got your, your purchase price. Repair costs are probably your most important number in this evaluation.
right? For most of the people in this room, I would not go more than 35% repair cost to your purchase price. So really easy example, $100,000 purchase, don't do more than $35,000 worth of repairs. If you have some level of experience, you got a couple deals on your belt, you got a couple deals on your belt, maybe I'd say you could go up to 50%, but again, it really depends on what that 50% really encompasses. If it's a new kitchen, new bathroom, and bathrooms, you know, two bathrooms, a full kitchen, some windows. Now, now I understand the 50 grand to the $100,000. I understand that because I'm, I'm a licensed GC in Philadelphia. So I understand my numbers. I've done a ton of renovations. Here, Lehigh Valley, North Jersey, Delaware. I've owned properties pretty much in four different states. So I understand how costs can add up, especially now with supply chain issues, material cost shifts. I mean, who the hell would have thought what a two by four costs now? Or a two by six, forget about it. I mean, like you're, like you're buying gold. Okay. And the biggest thing is labor shortages. A good contractor, where are you finding them? Quality workmanship? A craftsman? Like I, 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 I have dinner with a master craftsman once a, a week. We're family friends and we have dinner. This man is charging anywhere between $250 to $300 an, an hour. He's worth every penny. He's a specialist in what he does. When he, makes, when he puts together a bathroom, you want to die in the bathroom. Okay? His repairs are just, I mean, he's doing work in Margate and Stone Harbor and media. I mean, he's not coming down into Philly. You know, the crews that you, the crew, you got to really vet your crews here in more of the urban cities. It's really tough. And, you know, I, I'm not surprised when I hear somebody tell, I mean, the average birth strategist goes through two contractors per deal. It just happens. That's the average thing. And the average rehab in a BRRRR strategy on the renovation costs, the repair costs, average repair turnover of a BRRRR strategy right now, based on, on the Private Lending Association of the United States, which I belong to, um, takes seven months to turn. Okay, so think about it. If you're not very calculating your renovations and really almost place subcontractors in, in, with the GC, you're gonna fail. You're gonna fail. Keep your percentages at a lower risk. Because all you're doing is getting, your, 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 your rates are just gonna go higher and the risk is gonna go higher. And you, more likely somebody's taking that property back and you're ending up with nothing and you put a lot of money out and you got nothing for it. So buying and renovation, repair costs, very important. So I take my R, I take my cost of 30%, I take my repairs, I back into my maximum allowable offer. Okay, so that there's my, it's very number oriented. Maximum allowable offer. This is the theoretical maximum you can pay and not leave any of your money in a deal after refinancing. This is not a requirement to do a deal. However, what is acceptable to leave in will be different for everyone depending on your own cash flow and financial ability. Okay? Kind of makes sense if you think about it. And then I take an additional 15% off to give myself some negotiating power to make an offer. I'm, I'm not going to go in and just hit the mayo and then because somebody's going to counter with me. That's what real estate's all about, countering and everything. And guess what? If you make 20 offers and you get one deal out of it, did you still get one deal out of it? My analogy, I'm going to go down, I'm going to go outside, I'm going to, not here maybe, but the, I'm going to go in center city, go in Rittenhouse Square, I'm going to ask 100 women out for dinner. Okay? I might get mugged out here, so I just want to say, <laughs> I want to be in a little safer environment. I might still get mugged at Rittenhouse, but at least I got a better, better shot at asking 100 women out. How many women have to go out to dinner with me? One. How many deals do you have to buy at a time? Right? How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. You're taking on an elephant when it comes to a burst strategy. Do you understand? So, if you look at, evaluate this, this, this sheet, what LTV based on after repair value am I at with this sheet evaluating deals? What do you think that, that this deal, what do you think this Mayo worksheet 
puts you at LTV based on R. If you ran your numbers. Okay, this is old school, and this is how it's supposed to be done. Now, lenders go up to 70 or 75% loan of value based on our after repair value. So guess how much, how much equity there is on the back end if you screw up? None. How much money you'll have to bring to the table if you go upside down on your deal? A lot. If you buy like this and you make a 5% prob uh, mistake, you still got equity in the deal. This is based on a 65% loan of value on after repair value. Not 70, not 75%. 65% loan of value based on after repair value. And you're gonna say, man, you're crazy. Nobody's getting those properties. I'm not saying I need all the properties. I need one property at a time. I need the right properties. I need the right people in desperation. I need the right opportunities. 65% loan of value based on after repair value. Are we clear? You don't have to like what I have to say. But I'm telling you right now, if you go at 70% loan of value based on after repair value, or 75%, and you make a mistake, it's your mistake, it's gonna cost you a lot of money. You're gonna be what you call upside down. Has anybody ever heard that term? I'm upside down on the deal right now. Okay? Any questions so far? Go ahead. What's that? You email me, I email you. It's a very simple process. Yes. All right. All right. So, so our question was, if you, if you buy in using a sheet, if you was to buy property flat out cash and... Now, that's different. You buy something cash. Not everybody's walking. Is everybody walking around with a couple hundred grand? No. I'm saying like, she's saying like, say, where do you find your APR, ARV? That if you go buy something, say you go to auction, get one for twenty thousand. How do you make the ARV of the house going to be worth? Well, Jonathan, how do we how do we derive an ARV? A CMA. Uh, well, you have to look at comparable properties uh, in the area. Like, like you know, they said three three bed, two bath. So we have to make sure that you look at in the in the proximity similar properties and look at the condition, right? And they compare it to what you have. So then let me go. Let me go a little further. Didn't you just tell me you have four rental properties and you've done two rehabs in the last 24 months? Yeah. I'm going to trust him way more than anybody else that's a realtor that probably lives with their grandmother right now. So basically, you say the same thing. So you like find the value of the next property to get your uh, you know, repair value. That's that's remember, like, eight thousand. Maybe maybe got it for twenty. Yeah. That's how you find. Well, your, uh, listen. The the dream of getting properties for twenty grand. I don't know where you're going to do that in Philadelphia. Good luck. But no, yeah, I'm just saying. I'm just don't ever think low because let me tell you something. That those days of the twenty thirty grand world in the Philadelphia market. I think that's I think that's done. I think you're pretty much yeah, even even a shell. Philadelphia you're probably a hundred grand. Uh, yeah, I'm just using it as an example. So I just want to change the mindset a little bit. That's all. I'm just trying to mold clay here, okay? But at the end of the day, there's, what, 8,000 realtors in the greater Philadelphia market? Okay. How many of the realtors own at least their primary residence? That's the first question. So that, let's take that 8,000. You'll, you'll probably cut 3,000 people out. How many own at least one investment property? You cut another group out. You can now, as then, the, the, uh, a realtor that owns at least five properties and have done one rehab in the last 24 months, you're probably down to a, such a small percentage. I wanted to get so small, I want to work with very specific, I'm very razor sharp in my intention. Do you understand as a lender? Because I don't want to waste my time or anybody else's, our time. Okay, so I look at the cost-benefit relationship. I want to meet 20 Jonathans a month. Because he gets it. He knows what I need to see. He knows what the relevant conditions of that market, or that neighborhood really, by neighborhood. You can't tell me the neighborhood of Point Breeze is the same as Grays Ferry or Palton Village. They're all different, every one. You know, everyone's different. So the finishes in each one are different perception to what the Mayo and the after repair value and the repair costs are gonna be, okay? So this Mayo sheet, as this market is correcting itself, do you think I'd rather be at 65% loan to value when I know ours are gonna come down a little bit, or gonna settle down a little bit? What if 
that, that value of $200,000 is now 180 by the time I get the project done if I get it done within six to seven months. Remember, I got a window. Time kills deals. Time, time costs a lot of money in, in the rehab world on bird strategy. Both, both things, so keep that into consideration. Okay, are we good with this? Everybody's gonna get a sheet of this, so don't worry, nobody's not gonna be, not, not get it, okay? So we're gonna go to our next one. Cash flow worksheet. Nice and clean. Guess what? You have the address on the one property, on the one page. You put the address to the, pro the same property on the next page. So we're assuming that you're going to hold the property for cash flow. If anybody plans on using cap rate for residential investment property, one through four units, I can open the door and let you go now. Okay? That, please don't ever use that, that term in a residential property, one through four. You, all you're doing is making yourself look not competent. Fair? It's about debt service coverage ratio and cash on cash return and cash flow. When somebody's trying to brag the cap rate on a single family home is 11%, jackass. Next. I'm really, I mean, again, I'm not bullshitting you. This is no, I got no time for that. And you're using the wrong term for the wrong type of asset. Get it? That's it, we're good, we're clear? Everybody have any questions on that? We're not gonna talk about cap rate anyway, so I'm not even gonna tell you what the definition is. So it doesn't matter. Cash flow. You got your address, your carryover after repair value. Confident to say we can go anywhere up to 75 to 80% loan of value based on the debt service coverage ratio of the property. We'll, we'll talk about debt service coverage ratio after this next page. We obviously want to know market rent. Now, sometimes market rent and Section 8 rent kind of play side by side, so we've got to play that game out. Then we've got to back off our expenses. MDS. What is MDS? Monthly debt service, the monthly payment on your refinance loan, principal and interest. Okay? You know, on a 30 year fixed money on, 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 in an LLC, the rates can go anywhere between 4 and 5%, depending on your credit, asset type, your experience, etc. So, again, that can fluctuate. I'd use 5% as a rate, because if it works, at 5% on a 30 year fix at 75% loan to value and the debt service works and you get 4.5% you're ahead of the game. Make sense? Taxes divided by 12. Insurance. You should have a good insurance person in your, in your team. Hey, I'm buying a single family home. Back end value is going to be this. I'm going to rent it for this. What do you think insurance is going to be like? It's a quick three minute call. Don't guess what the insurance is going to be. Know what the insurance is going to be. You're going to have to get builder's risk anyway for the loan, doing a, a, a construction loan. So ask that question to the, to the agent. Say, listen, when I'm ready to stabilize this property and I'm taking it out of the builder's risk loan, uh, builder, builder's risk policy, what does is, what is my insurance look like? Give me an idea. No harm in asking. You want to be specific. You want to be competent when you're talking to your, your lender, whether it's me or anybody else. You want to know what you're talking about. You want to be specific. Your intention wants to be serious, okay? We're not buying a bicycle here. We're buying a home. You know, we're not bringing a dog home. We're buying a house. And you're expecting a return from it. Get it? So then we have property management. I would say just use 10% or $100 a month. Because no, you're not going to you're not going to find a property management com company worth their salt doing anything less for that. Am I right, Jonathan? Uh, unless you have a couple properties with them. No. Exactly. Hundred dollars or ten percent. I'd use the ten percent and call it a day. Deferred maintenance. What am I using as a percentage of deferred maintenance? Like ongoing stuff. Oh, I just repaired the property. I'm not going to need to do any repairs. That that's nice to think like that. It's good to dream, but it's not going to happen. That's fantasy island. Okay, we're in reality here. So I usually try to use anywhere between 3 and 5%. If it's market rent, I'll use 3%. If it's Section 8, it's 5%. Fair? Sure. Vacancy. I always use 5%. Meaning the property can go empty for a couple months. Like anybody that's trying to rent a unit right now, it ain't getting occupied until February. Fact. I had a buddy just call, buy a two-family house on the Berks Avenue car corridor, like 600 grand. It's empty. He doesn't plan on getting a real tenant a real available tenant until February. 
So he loses two months of rent right off the bat. He hasn't even made any money. Bought it for six hundred thousand dollars cash. He doesn't even want to touch refinance. I'll just leave it. Leave it. Don't worry, Joe. We'll refinance it. He bought it cash. God bless the guy. I wish I had six hundred thousand just to go do that. I wouldn't. Well, I wouldn't put my six hundred thousand because I have lines of credit. I wouldn't put. I wouldn't. I want money immediately. I'm all about cash flow. So if I put six hundred thousand dollars out, I want cash flow right away. Unless there's a bigger picture on the burst strategy, which you could create some really great built-in forced equity into a deal. The way that I'm doing this for you, you're going to create forced equity. I promise you. If you follow this, you probably get less deals but better opportunities. Fair. I then come up with my expenses. Now the vacancy, the property management, and deferred maintenance, those percentages are taken away against the rent, whatever that rental amount is. Fair? Everybody get that too? The tax insurance are more flat numbers. Okay, and then I come up with my expenses, I back it against my rent, and there's my cash flow. Sounds pretty it's nice. Well, again, depending on the debt leverage. And it depends on the debt service coverage ratio. So what's debt service coverage ratio? Debt service coverage ratio equals net operating income divided by debt service. My debt service is 1.2 or better. I can go as low as 1.15, but why get risky? Just use 1.2. Debt service equals interest and lease payments plus principal repayments. Sounds like a good little definition, but it probably makes you a little confused. So what we're going to do, and I'm going to stop there for a second. Where are we? Come on. All right. So any questions so far? The, listen, ask away. I, there's no bad questions. I'd rather you ask something that you're not comfortable with and get it out and feel complete than not be complete. You got something? Good? Complete? Good? How about you? In the deferred maintenance, is what you take into account like, the, like capital expenses? Shit right? that happens. Like, uh, like a heater. A hot water heater goes. Okay. You thought you replaced it. Uh, there's a leak in the basement. They didn't seal the, the wall correctly. That stuff happens. It just happens. If you're not prepared for it, you don't have those reserves. We'll talk about reserves, too, in a few minutes, too. But I want to make sure you understand how... If you use these sheets correctly, you send them to me, my reaction is going to be immediate. I'm going to be all over what you're doing. All over it. We cool? So, borrower name. That would be your LLC and or your personal name. So you're going to put your LLC and your personal name. Because I need to know who you are because the LLC doesn't tell me who you are. And for the love of God, do not name your LLC after yourself. Keep your ego to yourself. All right? Let me know what type of property type it is. Is it a one unit, a two unit, a three unit, or four unit? Once you get into five plus units, that's a different discussion. Tonight, for the most part, from a birth strategy, I want to know one through four. Are we, are we fair with that? I know we got big dreams. That's great. We all should have them. But I want to stay at a, 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 a level playing field. Number of units go here. Also, know the square footage of your property. Because most contractors are doing renovation either by the square or by the job. So know what your square footage of your property is. You should know anyway. Why don't you know? I could find out in three minutes why Google searching. Why am I doing that for you? Why am I making you the smarter investor? Why don't I just buy the property? Do you know I had a client disappear on me on a 40 unit? you know I'm under contract on that 40 unit? And he called me, he goes, hey, are you under contract for that 40 unit I submitted to you? I said, you ghosted me. You wouldn't give me any information. So I called the client himself and said, is this property still available? Because the client walked away. SOL. Okay. You don't want to be integrous. There's other, guys, there's other vultures like myself. They'll come and grab that. It's in Pittsburgh. I love Pittsburgh. That's why I'm out there once a month now. I'm going to be a member of the RIA there, which is very good, actually. And Pittsburgh is a great market, by the way. Great market. Property value. Remember ARV? 
loan them out. Well, you remember that 75 to 80%? Now, mind you, maybe the debt service coverage ratio will not allow you to get 75% because I still have to hit 1.2. Okay, so you got to make sure you're buying correctly so your debt leverage you can capture all or most of your money out of the deal. There's nothing wrong with buying cash, but you still got to recover your money. Well, I, you know, I always have these guys, oh, I buy everything cash. I said, listen, brother, you're going to talk to me eventually. Maybe not now, maybe not the second one, but I'll be your best friend eventually. Or somebody will. So we can have the chat now or we can have the chat later, whatever it works. Okay, so I'm going to use a 30-year amortization. I got my annual debt service. All this is pretty much straightforward, but these are some of the things you need to know. All this information, doesn't this all look relevant to the cash flow worksheet? All you're doing is plugging in numbers. You got to practice it a couple times. What's the annual debt service? Annual debt service needs to be 1.2 or better. Once you start plugging all these numbers, it'll all kind of, I, like the formula doesn't work. I'm not going to go through this because I don't really have an example at the top of my head. I just want you to kind of f see what you're going to be working on. These are one of the sheets that you're going to be getting. Okay, you, can, you need to understand debt service coverage ratio when it comes to BRRRR strategy. Buy, renovate, we already talked about buying, we're, we're going to get to renovate again in a minute. Rent, re, uh, re refinance, then redo. Yes. So question, is this something like the form of form that you need to so that you need to jumpstart now? Like, no, I take it to the next step. Uh -huh. They're just looking for you to understand how to deal on the front end. They're not really going to a deep dive on the 30 year fix on the back end. So they don't really give you the exit strategy idea. They expect you to do some, uh, some elbow grease, mm -hmm. like now, right now, put your time in to understand how to get out of the loan. Okay, I, listen, can I beat Kenny's rate? I'm close. But I'm also not looking for a newbie on that. I'd rather see you on the way out and do the refinance, mm -hmm. see that you have a level of experience, and then maybe I can get you on the next deal. So it would make sense for me to See, my pricing on private lending is very, I can go as low as 6% and I'm as high as 9% on, on the construction side, the birth strategy side. Okay, but I can't always do that for a newer investor. Right. I'm going to be more toward eight to nine percent. But maybe you don't like the terms of that deal. But I think I think Kenny puts a really good product out, so I think it's really a good product for a newer investor. And there's some hand holding. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think that's important as well. But once you get to your fourth, fifth, or sixth deal, I mean Kenny's nice to have, but you want to build a relationship with other lending sources because you're going to you're expanding you're trying to do more than a couple deals every six months you're trying to do multiple deals at the same time you're going to try to get multiple crews working at the same time you, you understand but it's really nice that that you have this program here i mean this doesn't exist in others in some other areas of the country mm -hmm. it just doesn't they're dependent upon hard money lenders that are predatory now private lenders are in this mix. We're like the new, we're cowboys. We're the badasses walking up, okay? And I've been to six different lending real estate expos in the past two and a half months. We are not comparing ourselves to hard money at all. Like you asked that briefly. 9% is still cheaper than hard money lender. Because a hard money lender is gonna charge between 10% to 12% interest only. And they're going to charge anywhere between three and five points. I'm charging one to two points on origination. I'm pretty cheap, if you think about it. Now, my, my interest only pro, uh, cost on, the, on the, the BRRRR strategy is a little more expensive than a community lending source such as Ken Weinstein and Jumpstart Germantown. But you, they, they should be beating me for the newer investor. They should be. Now again, if you, you again, we could talk about that if you, you're just not comfortable with the product. There's other products, and that's fine. But I'm not looking to take on all the newbies. I want Kenny to get you experienced. So now I'm getting an experienced borrower on the back end with a profitable deal. But if you use my sheets, now I know Kenny uses some of mine. Mm -hmm. He has he added some of my sheets. Well, that one, it look, definitely looks. Um, he probably took it. It's okay. I don't care. Listen, <laughs> when you, when you listen. Guess what? One thing I learned in my business, 
you actually still have to know how to apply it. Mm -hmm. I could show you every are, sheet. How long are private lenders like yourself been around? Me? Yeah. Or just private lending? Private, lending. private lending's been around for about a decade. You know? I mean, private, um, Wall Street money's been involved with buying real estate for the past 20 years, but I think the, the money coming to the investor, like yourself, maybe the last 10 years, but it's gotten very forefronted in the last 24 to 36 months. I mean, I mean, like, we're like, hey, how you doing? We don't have six feet of distance in, that, in our world, in private land. We're right in your stuff. We want, we want experienced borrowers. We want to take them to the next level. We want to scale you up. You want to scale your business up. Burr strategy is the best way because you're creating forced equity. Do you understand? Forced equity is the best way of getting into a deal with less money out of pocket. Because I'm looking for anywhere between 15 and 20% on a purchase, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fund up to 100% on a construction. So that's, remember that example, the 100,000 and the 35,000 repairs? I'll give you 100% on the 35% on the 35,000. But I damn well want 20, I want 20 grand on the, on the purchase. That's not as bad as 25,000 on a conventional purchase on a turnkey. You see where I'm going? And then you might have to do some paint and lipstick and now you got 10 grand out and you're waiting to make that cash flow back on a back end. That doesn't make a lot of sense. To me, even if it needs 10 to 15 grand, do a rehab loan. Let somebody give you the 100% of the repairs and then you stabilize it. At least you got that covered. Next. So question. So each of us, we all have a property that's in our personal name. And I know you said that private lending doesn't do um, Let's talk about that. So if we were to transfer them into LLCs. And Stop. Do you know how expensive it is? In, you know, it's mafia numbers. In, in, uh, I'm allowed to say mafia because I come from Italian heritage, so I'm allowed to say that stuff. So I just want to make sure we got that. You, you know what, Philadelphia is not, not just communist, but it's mafia. Four and three quarters on, on a transfer tax. So am I saying it's the cost? That's why I didn't change what I was going to ask you that. Listen, listen, to listen it's the cost to doing business, but do I suggest doing that in this new landlord-tenant world right now that we have here in Philadelphia? I would. I, that four and three quarters? worth every penny from an asset protection. Right now, changing uh -oh. it over. No, no, no. Do it at the refinance. Mm -hmm. Do it at the refinance. Bite the bullet at the, at the refinance. Okay. So get a property in your name and then when you refinance. I didn't say that. No, no. No, from now on, do not do anything in your name. Let's slow down. I got, I got a lot of things going on and, and being a stroke survivor can't handle like all the conversations because my head starts spinning. Okay. I'm speaking about the personal properties that we own. Okay. The ones that you have in your personal name right now, we, we would have to have a discussion to see the cost benefit and is there a room for you to absorb that in the refinance. Again, it's every client is different. And I'm not saying it makes sense for everybody, but I haven't bought a property in my personal name, I don't know, 15, 20 years. I even, buy, listen, the two family that I bought in Turnersville, I put my mother-in-law and my, my wife's aunt upstairs. I live on the, the bottom, quiet, very secluded. I got extra cushions, I don't hear anybody, especially my mother-in-law. So it's all good. It's buffered, okay? Well, guess what? I bought that in the LLC because my intention was not to live in it. My intention was to originally invest and just rent it out. But then I got sick and I said, you know what? Screw it. I'll move in. I'm, nobody knows I live there. It's in an LLC. Okay? I like it that way. You know? I, I'm going to buy probably, a, I, I have a condo down in, uh, in Atlantic City, right near Stockton area. But, I mean, maybe I'll buy another one. I might sell that and buy another one. I'm buying that in the LLC. Because I'm going to rent it, maybe short-term rental, maybe some long-term, like six-month snowbird rentals. I'd just rather be in my LLC. I don't want anything in my name. Nothing. I have my car payment, one. The other one's in my business name. Okay. I have one in my personal name just because I, I, I want to take some deductions on my personal side, and that's fine. It's just an accounting thing that I need to do, but I, everything's in the business. Everything is in the business. Now, you say, now, I know you guys mentioned you want to do stuff, get your business stuff going. You know that's kind of like, I hope you didn't pay for a workshop to learn how to do all that stuff, because that's all bullshit. No. Okay, I just want to make sure we're good with that because I just want to make sure we got that clear. I, you still need a 680 credit score better. And if you don't, fix it. Because let me tell you, all that, that business, business lines that are imaginary not using your personal information is crap. And if you pay a workshop for it, get a refund. 
there's a lot of pre like as the market's turning in a market correction environment, there's more predatory workshops out there. There's somebody teaching how to become a mortgage loan off a broker. You don't have to get your license. You can make a lot of money. You know what they're charging people? $10,000. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many mistakes I make? And I've been in the business 25 years. I make a couple mistakes a day. Okay, but do, do I find them and fix them and move on? How is somebody that, that just started going to do no more than me? I look at anywhere between 20 and 30 transactions a day. Somebody's paying 10,000. They should pay me. If they're paying some clowns $10,000, they should pay me 100 grand. Do you know how insane and predatory that is? Do you know how scary that when the market starts turning, predatory Ponzi people come out? Mm -hmm. Remember that. You are very blessed if you took a jump in our, 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 our jump start class. I don't think Kenny's got a, a, a Ponzi predatory bone in his body. Do you understand? Teaching this, you got to really know what the hell you're doing. I'm giving you the tools to understand from the beginning evaluating the deal to the debt service to know what, what your debt leverage liability is from buy, renovate, which we'll talk now, rent, refinance, and redo. I'm very adamant about this because it really obsessed me with the predatory stuff that goes on out there. Okay, so this is a capital budget draw sketch, which you have your budget to your left, you have your draw schedule from draw one through five, if you need five draws, and your balance is on the front end. Only lenders have this spreadsheet. You're going to have them have this after tonight. When you put together your budget for repairs and draw schedule, you're using this sheet from now on. Why? What, 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 why do I want you to use this? It's called impression. You're making an impression with your lender that you know what you're doing. You know that fake it till you make it? Use this sheet while you're doing it. When your GC gives you the bid, put it to this. Because most GCs wouldn't know a draw schedule if it friggin' banged them in the forehead. You're going to teach your GC how to do a draw schedule. Got it? I have a quick question. Sure. <laughs> so when we send an email requesting these documents, are you going to also like send samples? No. Complete You're sending me samples. <laughs> oh, you... I'm not the Red Cross, dear. I don't cure cancer and I don't do open heart surgery. Are right, you were looking for compassion. No, no. You, you want a hug? You want a hug? Get out of here. I want to throw a tissue box at you. Listen, we're in war, man. You, listen, you make a mistake, you're upside down. You make a mistake, you lose the property. You make a mistake, you're bankrupt. Do you see your options? The average human mind needs to do this seven times before they get it. So most of us are not average, we're probably a little more under average. So let's say 10 times. Go find 10 properties and put pen to paper on this whole entire scenario all the way through. Okay? It's all very straightforward. You can handle it. I, I, Listen, you can color your hair red. I can't do that. Right? Yeah. So you do you could do something I can't do. You work on a different engine block than I work on. Okay? I need these to better understand to explain a deal. When you call me and you want to put a deal together, Joe, I got a great deal. I'm going to ask you t 10 things. You better have the answer for all 10 things or I'm going to say get back to me. Because I'm going to submit that bad boy in right away, but I would really be imp I'd really be impressed if you had these spreadsheets that I sent to you filled out nice and like, nicely. Pro don't create your own. Use the ones I give you. I don't care about your creativity. Oh, I changed your Mayo worksheet. I really didn't like how it looked. I don't care. Use the one I get I sent you. Do you understand? It's very simple. I wouldn't send you the sheets unless I needed it this way. You don't have to change anything for me. I'm good. 
I'm old school, but I'm new school. Is everybody connected with me on LinkedIn? Is everybody connected with me on Facebook? Why? Why not? Don't do it tonight. You have Instagram? Follow me on Instagram. No, no, not yet. Okay. no, no I'm, I'm all about Instagram. <laughs> Are you on Clubhouse? No. Oh, I am. You're on Clubhouse? You don't know me on Clubhouse? Yeah. Do you ever follow the Creative Bird Strategy Club? No. Yeah, that's my club. Oh, we have the right idea. Creative Bird Strategies on Clubhouse. Who is not on Clubhouse? You guys on Clubhouse? You don't even know what it is, right? It's a crazy app, man. It's, cr it's insane. Yeah, I'm one of the influencers on Clubhouse. I, I'm very strict on who my moderators are. So you can come up and be nice to me, but you ain't going to be modded. So don't worry about it. You'll be a guest. I'm very, very careful who I allow because there's a lot of scumbags on there. And they will rip you off. And if you want to go get ripped off by them, see ya. Bye, Felicia. I got no time for that. Got to go. Got to go. Listen, I was raised by a very Italian mother. It was either I'm having steak tonight or I'm having steak tonight. Or I'm having nothing. It's a very, it was a very simple meal. Joseph, we're having chicken parm. I don't really want chicken parm. Well, we have chicken parm. Figure it out for yourself otherwise. Okay? I'm not here to mentor you. I'm here to educate you, to evaluate deals, to present me deals if you choose to. Or present them to whoever you want to, choose, you want to present them to. But most likely, the individuals that look at these sheets probably wouldn't even know what the hell they're looking at. But I'm going to train you a different way. Good morning, James. Oh, Good morning. Is that Bob Cheswick? I don't know. God, just cut it off. That sounds like my guy. Are you in one of my clubs? I just pulled it up. I think that was it. Which one? Yeah, I shut it off. Well, do you have real estate as one of your thing as your? Yes. Yeah. I'm not going to see any pictures. Well, I don't need I, to see, right? How did I'm not even really... Well, you got nothing going on here. No, I'm, I'm fairly new, so... Follow me on there. Joseph, Joseph V. Scaris. This is another thing. I use my real name on every site that I'm on. When you go into Clubhouse or Facebook and they don't use their real name and they're supposedly licensed, they're actually breaking the law of their license. Do you understand? They're Ponzi's. Okay? You don't want to be around those kind of people. You want, to f you want to surround yourself with people that ha have their licenses right out in front of them, have their full name. I have nothing to hide. I tell people, anybody on, on, when I'm on Clubhouse and I do my presentation or we have an educational, please connect with me on LinkedIn because you get to see my whole resume. They see me all the way back to Rutgers. I'm a Rutgers North graduate, so I fought my way to school. Hand-to-hand -hand combat, you know what I mean, kind of thing. It was all crazy down there in Newark in the 90s. Go ahead. What was the name of your clubhouse again? My clubhouse club is called Creative Birth Strategies. We meet Wednesday night where I do a mortgage brokering class. Saturday mornings, 8 a.m. Get your butt up. Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, no, 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 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock for you. 8 a.m. <laughs> 9.30 a.m. on Sundays. So I, which one is it? What are you doing here? I don't know how to use it. Now I'm helping you. You see what's happening? Yes. That gets me. Here you go. Um, you're in. See what I don't I don't joke, man. We get it done. Who's on Clubhouse? Clubhouse, Clubhouse? Yeah. Who's on Clubhouse? <coughs> Follow the creative bird strategy. You know, I, I go on there, right? Now I'm only a year old on there as of January 19th. You would have thought, you know, wouldn't they have a bird strategy club? These people are so stupid. They didn't even have one out there. Wow. Like, I'm like, is this a joke? I thought it was a joke. I, I, I was like, is this a joke? I got like 5,000 members in there. You're very sensitive, very sensitive. So listen, we can stay in touch with one another and keep the relationship going, but I am not your mentor. I am a lender. You're not calling me just to kind of pick my brain. I got not much left, I'm an 80s kid. I mean, I'm lucky I got any brains left. Anybody from the 80s? 
You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? You guys know what I mean. We earned our keep, right? We didn't have a phone. We didn't have a we had pager. You, with technology. Exactly. We're chameleons. We're chameleons. We're not old. We're just chameleons. So common sense approach of Burr. Now, when you went through the, the Jumpstart class, was it taught like this? Be honest. I, I want to know what what did you get out of Jumpstart when you just to get into the deal, right? From the rehab perspective. Yes. But there was really no discussion of the exit strategy. No. Okay. No, I think really everything that they. Do. I'm giving you the exit strategy between the cash flow worksheet and the debt service coverage ratio, but I'm also shoring you up with a better mm -hmm. capital budget and draw schedule mm -hmm. to present to your repair side. Now you get now. We did have a class on Saturday talking about, hey, does it make sense to become a licensed realtor? Do you want my opinion? Now, opinions are like butts. Everybody's got one, right? But you want my opinion? If you're gonna be active as a, as a real estate professional, i rather depend on myself to get my comps mm -hmm. than wait on somebody else to get me comps. Jonathan, mm -hmm. how fast is it? When you need comps, how fast do you get them for yourself? About five minutes. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you like to have those accessibilities? Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't got to be, be a rocket scientist. We're not the sharpest tools in the shed. We got bald heads. Probably all our brains are leaking out anyway. You can blow smoke on glass and get your license. Okay? So getting your real estate license, I think, is something valid, very integrous. And, you, and I think it'll give you a, a better idea of comps on the after repair value side more than ever. And you'll, there's no such thing as bad or good luck. There's a thing called karma. Your karma is created by who you surround yourself with. So when I got sick, I was, I was surrounded by a lot of bad people. I cut them loose and my life is so much better because the people I'm surrounded with are just really good hearted people. But I've become very honest. There's no reason for me not to be honest with people. So I'll never not be honest with you. I think being a licensed realtor, if you're gonna be a, a long-term real estate professional, makes sense and it's cost benefit and it you earn a license like you know how they're trying to push this wholesale license that's to keep the the bad people out of it now the bad people are trying to skirt around of course because that's what bad people do but the wholesale license has brought the president said wholesaling is an industry do you understand it's an industry. You could say I am, am a licensed wholesaler in Philadelphia. I mean, it's a money grab, God bless. I'm a licensed realtor in Pennsylvania. That's, you could have that conversation, that confidence. I know what my after repair value is. I know what my repair costs are within a 10%, 20% contingency. I know what my mayo is. I don't have to buy the property based on what you're forcing me to do. Okay? I want to I want to make an offer with confidence. With those spreadsheets I gave you, you will have the confidence you need. I promise you. I kid you not, but use them the way that I set them up. Don't create anything new. I mean, if you want to just copy and paste and make your own from but keep the format exactly the same way with the same information over and over again and you will know what you're doing by the seventh eighth ninth deal you'll be telling me joe here are the bullet points you'll be telling me i swear you'll be it'll be a you'll be like you won't even it'll be like the matrix you're just gonna be pushing bullets out of the way that's how i look at loan submissions and loan inquiries i'm just where am i putting this where am i putting that where am i putting this okay this client he had, he or she has a 680 credit score 720 credit score it's their second deal in Okay, they meet lending one. Here you go. God bless. They have zero rehabs in. Okay, that means another bucket. Let's put them over here. They uh, they have five properties here. They got that's a lending one client. They have uh, they have no rental properties yet, but they got a hundred grand in the bank and they got a 780 credit score. Let's put them over here. Mature them a little bit. Move them up here. I'm just moving it around like a, like in a minority report. Just moving shit like here, 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 here. That's you're just finding the right boxes. Go to workshops that make sense. If it sounds like a shortcut, don't go. And I think you guys know the type of groups that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. If it sounds too good to be true, I'd rather you sit home and watch YouTube. That's the truth, right? 
You know, I, I remember uh, Kenny put a put something out there one time. Kind of made me a little nervous because I was, in, I was think I was the only Italian guy in the room, meaning white. Okay. He's like, there could be this like shortcut workshop, and there'll be a hundred percent minority in the room. This real educational subject, there's only going to be five percent minority in the room. Be the five percent. Don't be the hundred percent. See where I'm going with that? There is no shortcut in evaluating a deal in Burr strategy. None. You want to go to a good event, there's an economic development uh, class that's being provided by CCIM. It's $65 to go. You're going to be around a lot of people that are very smart. If you want the information, I can send you the, the ticket. I think it's like this Thursday, 11 to 1. That's an educational event. You've got people that have got CCIM certifications or licensed in a bunch of states. They do all kinds of transactions. If you're available Thursday, 11 to 1, the $65 for that event, instead of some how to buy a property for a dollar class, I'd rather go to the $65 one. Do you see where the difference is? And you know, another problem is there's not enough women in the industry because they don't feel like they're confident enough to be in real estate investing. Now, there's some organizations out there you've got to be careful about because they have their own agenda. These women groups, they don't worry, they have an agenda too. So you've got to be very careful. You want to have an off-color discussion with me on the phone, what do you think about this organization? I'm here to be, I know all of them, and they all know me. Okay? But at the end of the day, there's no way they could teach anything differently on Burr than what I provided you to this tonight. These spreadsheets, if you send to me correctly, I'm going to ask you about three or four or five questions, and I'm submitting them alone. That's it. If you use these spreadsheets and you send them to Joe, here's, the, here's my full name. This is how you send an email to a private lender. You want to make an impression? Your full name, the LLC slash LLC that you're using, the address of the property, and whether it's a rehab or it's a purchase turnkey. So if it's a rehab loan, just put dash rehab. You put those attachments on, please call me to go over. To me, that's impressionable. There's no BS there. Your, your full name, LLC that you're using, and the address. You could just do that. Don't even tell me it's a rehab or nothing, because I'll know if I see a Mayo sheet and a cash flow worksheet and a construction draw schedule and and what's the other one? Debt service coverage ratio. I know we're talking about a burr. Right? You good? You good? You need a hug still? You all right? Mm -hmm. okay. Right in my notes. What's that? Right in my notes. Again, what's going to be in the subject line? Uh, uh, Come on. Yeah, the, uh, your name, your LLC, then the, uh, the address. Address, yeah. That's it. And then these attachments. This is to any private lender or hard money lender in the world. If they don't get it, go to the next one. You just did all the homework for them. You did all the elbow grease. Is it fundable is the question of the day. Now, a couple last things with the LLC. Everybody over 10% ownership of that LLC better have a 660 credit score or better. But I have a, I have a question. Sure. If, you're, if private lending is under an LLC, how, why, why is your credit score important? Oh, they teach you in that other workshop that you don't need oh. the LLC. Yeah, you need that, that no, make point. No, no, I, I, I want to get clear with you. I, wanna get, I want you to understand. Yeah, I thought that was two different groups. No. Mm -hmm. yeah, they, so. There's these but little yeah, scam different. group. There's these little scam workshops that make you think that you're going to use your... Yeah. Throw that shit out in the garbage. Mm -hmm. That's all waste. Whatever you paid for that class, try to get a refund. Mm -hmm. Dispute your credit card. Whatever you got to do. Business credit is only established upon your credit. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a 680 credit score or better, fix it. I don't care how you do it. If you need a credit repair specialist, I have a guy, these guys, Drew and Jim, really nice guys. They're with Trinity Solutions. I've sent them about 10 people. He's actually presenting on credit on next Saturday workshop in February. Nicest guys you ever meet. We've hung out. We've smoked cigars. I'm very comfortable with them. I don't refer anybody else because I don't need to. Because I'm only wanting, I only want to work with people with 680 credit score. So if you're going to be the main guy, because you got all, you got all the, the background and the investment rental properties, and so hypothetically you want to bring this young lady in as a joint venture because she has the cash, I'm just using an example. If you're going to be the main guy, 
you better have a 680 credit score better. She's okay with a 660. Got it? Mm -hmm. But if you're the guy with all the experience, 24 to 36 months, I'm gonna look a lot heavier at you than her. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's no longer anybody under 20% of ownership, it's 10% or above. So if somebody's bringing money and you don't want them to see their credit because their credit's 580 for whatever reason, one, it's none of my business or how they got it there, but two, they better not be over 10% ownership. Fair? You're getting dropped to 5%, sweetheart. That's not for my business. She's an 800. No, I'm not an 800, but. Okay. It's okay. Everybody's an 800 when I talk on the phone. And then I pull the credit, and then it's a. Listen, listen. Do you know how many people have told me they got 840 credit scores? Do you know 840 doesn't exist? Do you know that? See. But you know what? I, you know, I don't even get angry. And you know what? I used to take it personally, like, you know, like, no, you're wrong. You're like, that. okay, thanks. Like, whatever you want to tell me makes me feel, whatever makes you feel better where you can sleep at night, I care. When I roll over, I have no regrets who I sleep with, so I'm fine. Okay, so at the end of the day, whatever you got, you got an 8,000 credit score, God bless. <laughs> sure, whatever you say, no problem. Can I run your credit, yes or no? Now, I don't run credit with the simulator. So everybody, at, so the, this portal that I set you up, you could just put a credit score in. Maybe it's a credit score you want to have one day. I don't really care. But it'll give you an idea. What I would do, if I was got the time, which you will have the time, now you're going to get addicted to the portal, try it at 680 credit score, try it at 720 credit score, the same scenario. Try it at 740 credit score, and try it at 760 plus, and see if there's a difference in pricing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm going to tell you? Yeah, there's going to be. Absolutely. I'm going to tell you, I met the stupidest person last year. It only took to the end of the year to meet the stupidest person, but I did get to meet the stupidest person this past year of the year. She gets the award. And she was a realtor. Not you. <laughs> so I'm at Triple Play. And no, I wasn't one of the guys hitting the guys with the chair and kicking them in that fight Wednesday night. That wasn't me. A lot of bald-headed guys, but it wasn't me. I was in Boca Raton at a poolside, but that's a whole other discussion. The guy flew out of AC Airborne, got the 80-degree weather. Okay, so I'm explaining to the young lady, hey, we need to have credit score. We need to see your experience. We need to see what kind of cash reserves you have. Now, again, we're going to need to see, and that's the last thing, cash reserves. We can look at your retirement for cash reserves, savings, checking, cash reserves, uh, retirement. So again, we'll have that discussion. Do you have enough reserves to support the deal? Okay, so I explained we need to see experience, we need to escrow. Now again, any on any BRRRR strategy loan also, we escrow 12 months of payments. So you don't have to worry about any mortgage payments during the 12 month of the loan. And if you pay it off sooner, you get the rest of that money, that difference back. I'm still gonna wanna see some reserves that you're not up, that you're like on the last dollar into the deal. So I, I don't wanna over leverage you. But I'm, I'm explaining to her, you know, we're looking at the criteria of the deal, it's asset based. She goes, you're a racist. I said, how am I a racist when I'm looking at your credit score? I don't care who you are, it's green. You're green to me, you're, you're green. I said, you can now leave my, my table and never come back and never talk to me again, please because you are now the most stupidest individuals. You don't even know what the term, what racist means. You actually, I am racist against stupid people. And you are very stupid. So you can leave, because you're serious, because I have a heart attack. Can you please get away from it? You're taking up too much space in my table right now, bye. Go away, here's a candy. I threw her a piece of candy. That's how stupid people get. People get a little sensitive. There's no reason to get sensitive. Listen. I'm not your brother or sister, I'm not your uncle. I'm a source to hopefully educate you, create a networking environment, and create an opportunity. Understanding birth strategy. I don't cure cancer, don't do open heart surgery. I'm not a miracle worker, I'm just a lender. Okay, I'm just here to help you find the right direction. These tools I gave you tonight make you a smarter borrower. And I don't. And again, at the end of the day, a private lender looks at one thing: green. They look at debt service. They look at cash flow. 
They don't care your he, her, him, his, whatever. They, I don't care. Okay? We discriminate, discriminate against somebody that doesn't know how to evaluate a deal. And sad to say, there's only a very small percentage. Jonathan is, is one of the smallest percentage. And I'm not, I'm not saying that because I would say this with him not here or here. I'm, I'm, the average realtor is, no, is nowhere near where Jonathan is. I'm telling you that for a fact. I'm not trying to blow smoke up his butt. I'm just telling it fact. If I took the, the 8,000 realtors and said, who owns four properties and have done two rehabs in the past 36 months? I'm, I'm, what, 1,000 out of the 8,000? Maybe. Maybe. So you've got a lot of things to think about. To be the bird strategy that you want to be, does it make sense to get licensed in real estate too? Yeah. Just a thought. Somebody needs to. I've been licensed since 1988. Who was born in after 1988? So when I was 18, busting my ass trying to pass that test, I took it with my mom. Okay. I passed that. I passed the New Jersey license. You know how I got the Pennsylvania license? You're gonna love this one. I had to find Harrisburg. Because back in '88, there was no MapQuest, no Waze. They told me to just get onto the turnpike, and once you start seeing cows and chickens and horses, you'll probably be at Harrisburg. I'm out there with my Mustang convertible, Mr. Guido from North Jersey. I got my AAA maps. And state trooper comes pulling up. Big dude comes over. Look, hey, you're not from around here, boy, are you? I said, no. I said, here, I show my AAA map, I show my New Jersey real estate license. Like, I'm hoping the guy doesn't, like, throw me into the farm or something like that. Like, you're never going to find that office. Because I'll escort you. I got a state trooper escort to go get my Pennsylvania real estate license. All I had to do was show my New Jersey license at the time, and they immediately stamped and gave me a PA license. You didn't have to take a test. Mm -hmm. Now, this is like 30 years ago. I mean, they, they didn't even have the MLS. You had the blue book and the yellow book. You know what that is? You heard about it? I heard about it. Yeah, you heard it. Like it, it was like, in, like back in the pyramids kind of thing. So you want to learn about the MLS. You could search your own properties out, evaluate your own deals, set your own appointments. And if you're qualified with me with the checklist I'm going to send you to put together, I send you a pre-qualification letter. I can't make it any easier for you. I need corporate documents, I need your bank statements, I need your tax returns just to make sure they're filed, you're not Amish. Nothing gets wrong with Amish, but typically they don't file returns, okay, because they don't, they don't believe in that, that's fine. I need to see leases on your properties, insurance on the property you're buying, purchase sales agreement or, or a mortgage statement, and your corporate documents, that's it. That's private lending. That sound like a lot of docs? You probably have most of that at your hand grasp. Now you're a licensed realtor and now you're sending me birth strategy templates now you really look good, right? Karma will work in your favor. If you use these four sheets and you bounce stuff off of me, if I can't do it, I'll put you in the direction that I can. That can. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Any last questions? <coughs> we good? So everybody has my card? Yeah. You don't have my new cards. No. That went big. Go big or go home. Of course. That's my man. That's I um, card, please, sure. Uh, yeah, I don't trust those ladies not giving you a card, bro. So that's. <laughs> I think those ladies will hold you hold it, hold you out for the card. They'll just. Uh, that's why I make sure you yeah, have one of my cards. Give my card, right? Well, Sunmay just harasses me on the phone, so that's okay. She just calls <laughs> me and then doesn't leave a voicemail. It's okay, and then sends me dots. I don't know what that was all about. I'm like, what's wrong with this young lady? I was like, what's going on? Why am I getting dots? You know what I mean? So, but listen, we're going to really keep, the, there's a lot of classes behind this. We're going we're gonna to dive deep into debt service coverage ratio. We're going to understand what private lending is and hard money is and banking financing. We're going to talk about business lines of credit. So if you need business lines of credit up to, up to $250,000, if you got good credit, like I, my wife had an 804 credit score. I got her approved for $150,000 in 30 days. So if you want to get unsecured business lines, anything over 720, you're going to definitely get good business lines of credit. We'll set you up for 100 grand. Get some liquidity, throw it into a bank account. Show, those, show that as your money in the deal. We could do that. Because a line of credit doesn't mean I, I could recognize that. Because the minute I know you, ha you create debt, 
then I want to see that bank, that statement of the HELOC. If the money's in the account for two months, and you make a couple hundred buck payments just to keep the money in your account, that's reserves. Do you understand the difference? So, so like, say you open up a $100,000 line of credit with me. Mm -hmm. The next day, take $95,000 out and put it in your bank. Let it sit there for two months and season in your, your bank statement. Now I'm not gonna bother asking you about where that money came from. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna source it. You made, what, $300 a month payments on the HELOC? Mm -hmm. On the, you know, the business line of credit? Mm -hmm. But you have $95,000 in reserves. Mm -hmm. You don't need 30 grand to put into the deal, and then you got 65,000 sitting on the sidelines for contingencies. You're in good shape. Did I go too quick with anything? Did everybody, I try to really go into, can you go over it again? The whole thing? You're crazy. <laughs> You're crazy. What, good credit and unsecured business lines of credit? Just call me. Just email me, call me. Literally, I make an introduction to one of my underwriters. Now, does it cost money to set it up? Absolutely. It's a cost to doing business. But guess what? You do one deal, the, the cost of setting it up, which is like four, three or four points on, on the amount that you set up, you make that back full fold. So, but that line of credit is yours always. Get it? Sir, I Sorry, I may, may have missed that. Uh, sure. Uh, about, uh, about the uh, business line of credit, is that like a upcoming workshop or just we just talk to you? Uh, no, you could talk to me now. It's not going to be until like March, April. Okay. But I can sign you all up for a, a, a discussion with the business line of credit underwriter to get liquid assets going. Yes. You need you need to have that. Thing. You need, you should yes. do it separately so you don't like like she does her own deals, right? Uh, no, no. Or she just doesn't right. like you. I mean, it's one of the tens. Well, I think she likes me. No, yeah. uh, uh, no. On 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 our on our flips, we do we're, we're doing. You do it together, together, but you should get business lines separately. Okay. So because when I'm looking at your credit, I'm looking at your credit. It's like very lane driven. It's individual. Yes. Okay. It's not for a business. Industry. No, no, no. It is going to be in your business. But it, I'm looking at your credit. Send me a, you know, what, I, they, what, what Eric would, would say is, I need a copy of your tri-merge credit report. Where do you get your credit report from? Experience. No, but where? I'm going to yell at somebody if they say it, but I'm going to yell at them. What credit, where do you go check your credit online? Never, never, never say your credit score on Credit Karma. No. I will hang up on you. Experian.com credit check total. Most reliable. Experian.com credit check total. Do a try merge credit report. Because because the the unsecured business lines can look at a soft pull. Okay. Don't ever say credit karma. It's a bad word. Uh, Experian.com or credit check total. Can you share the information about the credit repair person that you talk about? Your credit repair? Yeah. Just email me. I'll take care of it. Okay. So Joe, send me the credit repair guy. Or guys. And I'll send that to you. They're great. I, lo I love them. They, 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 one, they make me, listen, I get no business from them. Let me tell you something about Power Team, okay? Your best Power Team players you will never get a referral from. They make you look good, and that's the difference. I don't need referrals from them. They make my current clients look, make me look good. Do you understand? They respond, they're responsive, they're integrous. That's more important than them sending me a referral back. Most of the referrals I get from these guys, any of these guys that make me look good, are crap. And that's okay. They make me look good. They make my brand have a value. When Joe Scarice refers somebody, they take care of it. Who does not have an LLC? Who? You? Get one. Okay. Who does not have an LLC? Because if you don't, I have a registered agent. He will, he will go through fire to set up your LLC for you when you drop my name, okay? That's the kind of people you want in your power team. People are gonna run through fire for you. Okay, I'm not good because I know what I'm doing. I do know what I'm doing. But I, I really do well because of my team in my referral world. Credit person, email me, I'll send it, boom. 
You need the the, the uh, business line of credit. Boom, we'll have that set. I'll have all those interviews set up within the next three to five business days. I mean, that's just how we operate. The skill, it's hot. Skill, it's hot. I'm ready to cook an omelet, man. I'm on keto, baby. I need, I'm starving to death. I'm always hungry. I'm on intermediate fasting, too, so I'm ready to eat my fingers by the next day. So by noon tomorrow, if I don't have a meal in front of me, I'm going to kill somebody. So it just kind of works out that way. So i got to make sure... I'm taking care of things right now. I do a very Brian Tracy technique of how I handle emails. When I go to bed at night, it's like I can go on seven day vacation. All my e I have no emails in my email box. Like you see those emails that are in there? They'll be gone tonight. They'll be in folders and there'll be messages, notes to put down on my notebook to address. That's it. I can go on a vacation. When I got sick, when I had the stroke, I had the stroke at 7.30 in the morning. I was able to I was able to start really kind of be coherent with not on a lot of drugs. <laughs> so I was probably on a couple of really good ones. Probably by the third or fourth day. I had all my emails up to date by the fifth or sixth day. Not bad, right? So I want to thank you for your engagement. You got my information. Let's get stuff happening for you guys, okay? I want to see, I want to see success in 2022 for every single one. You took the time on a very cold night. There were some people that wimped out. Had a guy, one of my buddies called me, it's too cold. Won't say his name. He wimped out, he said, it's too cold. You guys cow cowboyed up and you're here, so thank you. Every second Monday evening of the month, every second Saturday, ask for the spreadsheets, ask for the business lines of credit, ask for the credit repair people if you need, if you need to help somebody else. And let's, let's make some money together, okay? Thank Have a great night. Thank you.